Hey guys, Jordan here with SOS Studio. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon in Florida, so I figured I'd get out into the garage and start building some uh, acoustic treatments for my studio. I'm going to be focusing on absorption panels. First things first, I've got my hearing protection here. I'm going to be working with some loud machines and saws, as well as cutting some wood, so I'm going to have eye protection and hearing protection. Very important as a musician or a studio engineer. Of course, there's a million and one ways to build these things. You can reach out to me at the email address below, and, uh, and we can talk over other ways of, of getting the same product. So I'm going to start with the absorption panels and for these I'm building frames out of some 1x3 furring which you can find at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's going to come in probably an 8 foot strip. I've actually built some templates which are going to save you time in the long run. Uh, a 48 inch template and a 24 inch template. And so that way instead of having to measure the wood every time I can just line it up with the templates mark where I'm gonna cut and make the cut and I've got a perfect line every time. The panels that I've got are two feet by four feet by two inches. So you wanna make sure that the inside of your frame is 48 inches. I've cut the ends at a 45 degree angle there to create a perfect corner. For the 24 inch, I've got a 24 inch interior. I've also cut myself a 24 inch square guide and this is going to serve as a placeholder for my acoustic panels as I'm building the frames. Also for the acoustic panels, you're gonna want some absorption. You're gonna want the, the fiberglass insulation. It needs to be dense. I'm dealing with the JM814, which is a similar product to a little more industry standard, the Corning 703. And so I ended up going with the fiberglass insulation. There are other materials out there you can use in searches. They should all work about the same. It just depends on budget, what you're looking to get into, what your, what your needs are, all those sort of things. So you can do a little research there, but you need it in two by four sheets. I'm using a pneumatic stapler. You don't have to use that. It's definitely the fastest way. If you know anyone that has one, I'd go about that. I'm using some one inch staples and I've got my compressor over here. Since we're dealing with fiberglass, we don't want to just leave it out because A, it'll get into the air and B, every time people walk by or kids walk by, they're going to pick at it and it's just going to fall apart really quickly. So you want to make sure that you're covering it up with fabric, not only to look nice and match the aesthetic of your studio, but also to protect your panels and to make sure that they stay around for a long time. You want to make sure that your fabric is as acoustically transparent as possible. Uh, you can buy acoustically transparent fabric online. You can buy it at Joann's. Uh, you can buy speaker cloth. Ugh! There are lots of different things that you can buy out there. Just find out what is best for your budget and what you think would look best in your room. I'm putting burlap on the back. It's cheaper than the linen that I bought. You can see that there are holes in this and the, the air is going to pass through fine, which means the sound's going to pass through fine. Oh my gosh! Darn. So this is my 1x2 full strip, 8 feet long. You make sure that your miter saw is at a 45 degree angle. Make sure you have your hearing protection in by now and watch your hands. Make sure the miter saw is plugged in. Now I've got a 45 degree angle. Now I can line up my 48 inch template, and I know that this template is a perfect 48 inches because I've already cut it and measured it. You just make sure it lines up at one end, and then make your cut at the tip where the end of the template lines up. And I want the angle to be the opposite of what it was on the other side. Now I've got two perfect 48 inch cuts without even using a tape measure. Now that I've got all of my wood cut for the frames, I'm gonna to start to assemble the frames. My 24 inch square guide, these are my 40 in, 48 inch side pieces going off, and then this is my 24 inch top. I'm gonna to put just a little bit of wood glue on each tip. You don't want too much that it flows out, you want just enough that it holds things together. We're gonna turn this over and do the exact same thing. Now that we've got the frame built, it's time to put in the insulation and cover it up with fabric. When you're dealing with the insulation, you always want to wear gloves. This stuff is glass and it's going to make all these micro abrasions in your skin. It's going to be itchy and it could potentially cause some problems down the line. See how nicely that fits in there? It's because we use the templates in order to create a perfect 2x4 interior. We're going to cover this up with burlap and the one inch staple is going to go through and it's actually going to hold the insulation in place. Now the burlap doesn't need to go all the way around because you're going to have the fabric on the front that's going to wrap around and it's going to cover up any loose edges. So 
this last side here is where you have the real opportunity to really pull everything tight. So make sure that it's as hugging the insulation as possible. And there you have it. There's the back of our insulation panel. Everything is pulled nice and tight. Uh, the insulation is now held in with the staples going into the side. I've got a couple staples sticking out here, so I'm just going to nail this into place. Then we're going to flip it over and do some linen. So I've got this fabric pre-cut. This is a white linen that I picked out of Joanne Fabrics. Uh, I have determined that in order to go around perfectly, it needs to be 30 inches across and 54 inches tall. I've already got this pre-ironed because you're not going to have a chance to iron it after it goes on here. There we go. I've got it laid out so that when I fold the fabric up around the edge, it comes up perfectly to the edge of the wooden frame so that I can just go along, lift it up as tight as it'll go, staple it in place. And I should be able to do that all the way around. Again, don't forget your hearing protection. take this, I can hang it up, I can mount it to the ceiling, I can do a bunch of different applications with it. I'm actually going to hover this off the wall uh, just a couple inches and I'll show you how to do that in another video. But that's how you make an acoustic panel. It's a great way to spend a nice beautiful afternoon in the garage. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Raise your voice.